Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the PP3D channel we'll learn how to clear up the complexion on your vase face. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to be fixing this. These annoying zits on your vase. No, not your face. Your vase. Or your vase's face. Something I've noticed on newer Creality printers is that they tend to leave zits on vase mode prints. Now, this may happen on other brands as well, but so far I've only seen it on my Creality printers with 32-bit main boards. And it has to do with the power loss recovery feature in Marlin firmware. Now there are two ways that power loss recovery can work. One is by means of having a power loss pin defined in Marlin, which is monitoring the state of the power supply. When AC power is lost, the firmware detects this, takes note of its current position in the G-code file, and writes that to a file on the memory card. But the power supply has to be designed with this in mind, and if I understand it right, it includes additional capacitors to continue supplying power to the printer long enough for it to not only write that file, but also move the nozzle away from the print. Now, due to the extra complexity of the power supply, or maybe the extra cost, this method is not commonly used. Now, the second and much more common way is that the status information is written to the memory card as each layer is completed. In other words, every time the z-axis moves up to print the next layer, that status gets written to the card. Now, this is fine on a regular print, but on a vase mode print, the z-axis is constantly moving upward, and so there are a tremendous number of writes happening. So many, in fact, that the printer bogs down waiting for all those status updates to finish being written to the card. They kind of stack up in a buffer, and the printer actually stops moving until the writes are done, and that buffer is clear, and then it can start moving again. But every time the printer stops moving, these zits appear. I first noticed this issue on my Enderfree Max, and Chris Kersey at Kersey Fabrications had the same problem with his during a live stream of the Enderfree Max unboxing at Assembly. Now, luckily, Scott Latine, the maintainer of Marlin, was in chat on the stream, and he suggested disabling the power loss recovery feature. And it turns out this is astonishingly easy to do simply by inserting a G-code command in your starting G-code. So, that's what we're going to do. Let's get into Prusa Slicer. And then, in the printer settings for the printer, we'll look in the custom G-code category. Then, here in the starting G-code field, right at the beginning of it, I'll type M413 space S0. And, so that I'll remember what it's for, I'll add a semicolon, and then type Disable Power Loss Recovery. That semicolon denotes a comment. Anything on a line after the semicolon is ignored. Well, it'll still get written into the G-code file, but Marlin will ignore it. And it works the same way in Cura, too. Edit the machine settings and add M413 space S0 to the beginning of your starting G-code. Now I can slice this candy bowl model again, save it to the card, and print it. And hey, look at that. Since we disabled power loss recovery, now it's nice and smooth. Look at that complexion. If only it had been this easy to get rid of zits when I was in high school. You'll just have to remember to add or remove this command as necessary when printing vase mode prints. Or will you? <laughs> Here's a super bonus tip. In Prusa Slicer, we can set it to automatically insert the command to disable power loss recovery if we're printing in vase mode and enable it when we're not. What magic allows us to accomplish this feat? Well, it's not magic at all, it's logic. Logic and Prusa Slicer macros, and also placeholder variables. Now, I got the idea from this from having seen these if-then statements in other areas of the G-code. Like here, for instance, in the ending G-code, where the decision is being made about how far to lower the bed at the end of a print job. So, I knew it was possible for Prusa Slicer to change the G-code it writes based on certain conditions. Mostly, it was just a matter of figuring out if there was a variable that tracked where the base mode was in use. I did a Google search for Prusa Slicer placeholders and came up with this page listing every placeholder available in Prusa Slicer. 
So in the description, there's a link to this placeholders page and a link to an article explaining how to use Prusa Slicer macros. Because that if-then thing that I mentioned a few seconds ago, that's a macro in Prusa Slicer. Well, anyway, way down here on the placeholders page, under a nondescript heading indicating less useful placeholders is the most amazingly useful placeholder you could possibly imagine. At least for our purposes. Right there. Spiral underscore vase. Now, given the fact that in print settings, under layers and perimeters, there's a checkbox to turn spiral vase mode on or off, I guess that it's a Boolean variable. That is, the value it contains is either true or false. So I crafted a simple little if-then-else macro. It looks like this. If spiral vase m413 space s0 else m413 space s1 end if. And literally, all that means is if spiral base mode is on, the m413s0 command should be included in the G code when the file is sliced. If spiral base mode is not on, then the m413s1 command should be included instead. See, according to the Marlin firmware page, s0 turns m413 off and s1 turns it on. So I sliced the model in base mode and saved the G code file. And then I turned off base mode, sliced it again, and saved that G code file as well. And look at the resulting G code. In the base mode file, it has M413S0, which disables power loss recovery. And in the non base mode file, it has M413S1, which enables power loss recovery. So now, with that if then else statement macro thing in place, when I slice something in spiral base mode, the power loss recovery feature will be disabled, resulting in a clean, zit-free finish on my base mode prints. It's the perfect solution. And this kind of stuff is why I really like Prusa Slicer. I bet there's all kinds of weird and wonderful things you can make it do. So just to sum things up, I ran into a problem, well, more of a conflict really, between base mode and the way Marlin handles power loss recovery when it's not able to directly monitor the power supply. It's not a bug, it's working as designed. It keeps track of what layer it's on when it's printing, so if it loses power, it knows where it left off and it can start from that layer and finish the print. But spiral base mode doesn't really have individual layers because the nozzle is constantly moving upwards while the model is printing. Spiral base mode is just incompatible with power loss recovery. The two don't play well together. But that's okay, because now, thanks to some logic and macros and placeholders in Prusa Slicer, power loss recovery will be automatically turned off when I slice files for spiral base mode printing, and it'll be enabled when I slice for regular layer-by-layer -layer printing. So now, everything is good. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for the likes, comments, and shares, and an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.